This is example number 216, and we will find the resulting motion of a spring mass system. This is an example from our textbook from Rao, 6th edition. As you see in the figure, a selected hammer strikes an anvil with a velocity of 50 feet per second. The hammer and the anvil weight 12 pounds and 100 pounds respectively. The anvil is supported on four springs, each of stiffness k equals 100 pounds per inch. And we want to find the resulting motion of the anvil first, if the hammer remains in contact with the anvil, and second, if the hammer does not remain in contact with the anvil after initial impact. The first thing that I will do is draw my equivalent system until the, before the hammer strikes. That will be the weight of 100 pounds and an equivalent constant of the spring, which is 4K. That equivalent constant of the spring we will calculate it as 4 times 100, which gives us 400 pounds per inch. The weight of the anvil is 100 pounds and the weight of the hammer is 12 pounds. The variable will be measured respect to a static equilibrium position of the anvil by itself. So we will not take into consideration the hammer for the where we want to measure our response. So in the first case, we will consider the hammer remains in contact with the anvil. To do so, let me draw the new free body diagram. So with the two bodies together, I have the anvil and I have the hammer. And my constant of the spring is exactly the same, which is 4K. And remember that I am measuring the variable respect to the equilibrium position of the anvil by itself. So once I have the hammer, I have an initial condition that is due to the new static position of the two systems together. This new um, position can be calculated by assuming the weight of the hammer divided by the stiffness of the spring and that will be the weight of the hammer which is 12 divided by 400 pounds per inch that gives me the initial condition equals to 0 0.03 inches Now I have to calculate the initial velocity. To calculate the initial velocity, I will use theory on impact. And for that, I will use conservation of linear momentum. Then we have that the mass of the hammer times the velocity of the hammer before the impact plus the mass of the anvil plus the velocity of the anvil before impacts is equals to both mass together times the velocity after the impact. And the initial velocity of the anvil is equal to zero. Now as we solve for that V2, which is the initial condition of the two mass moving together, and that will be the mass of the hammer times the initial velocity of the hammer divided by both mass together. That initial velocity is equal to the mass of the hammer is 12 over the gravity, which is 32.2 times 12, because I want to put it in the feet to inches. Then the velocity of the hammer is in 50 feet per second. I have to take that velocity and put it in terms of inches per second. Therefore, I have to multiply that by 12 as well. And then I have the uh, mass of the anvil that I have to also divide by 386.4, which is the gravity times 12. Finally, we get the velocity of the two masses together, which is the initial velocity of our vibrating mo motion, at 64 times 
64.28 inches per second. Now we can get our equations of motion. We will do our free body diagram, which is just the weight of the two masses and the force of the spring. But remember that we are considering x respect to the static equilibrium position of the anvil. And we already took the weight of the hammer into consideration to ask our initial condition. Now, the equation of motion is mass A plus mass the, the hammer times the acceleration plus 4K times X. Because these figures that allowed us to calculate the natural frequency of the system, the definition of natural frequency is the square root of K over M equivalent. That will be equals to Remember, this is the mass equivalent and that will be the spring equivalent. So the natural frequency will be 4k divided by the two mass together. Let's plug in the numbers and we get 400 divided by the mass. The mass add them together and we have to divide by the gravity times 12. That gives us a natural frequency of 37.15 radius over its thick. Let's now find the response of the system. There are several ways to write the response. Remember, as a single sign, as a simple cosine, of a sum of sines as cosine. I'm going to write it as, as a single sign with a phase angle. The magnitude is equal to the square root, the displacement, initial displacement square plus velocity over omega n square. And that, since we already calculated those values, let's plug in the numbers. Divided by 37. square and that gives me the value of the magnitude. The value of the magnitude is 1.73 inches. Now we can calculate the value of the phase angle. The inverse tangent, the displacement, omega n over the velocity. Remember that the phase angle, if we choose to use a Cosine a function is different, so we have to be careful calculating this angle. Let me plug out the numbers, and we get that the phase angle is 0 0.0 0.173 or 0 0.93 degrees. We can actually plug this equation. Now that we have the amplitude, the phase angle, and the natural frequency, we can plug this equation. Here is the equation. We can read the magnitude, and this magnitude remains constant because we do not have any damping in the system. We can read the period, which is the time for it to happen one cycle, and the period relates to the natural frequency as 2 pi over the period and we can see that very tiny but we can see the initial conditions of the system. Let's start now with part B in, in the case that the hammer does not remain in contact with the anvil after the impact its velocity is equal to zero. We, we are assuming that all the linear momentum is transferred to the anvil. Let's draw our mechanical system, this new condition, where we have only the mass of the anvil and the equivalent spring constant, which is 4K. And we have no initial condition because we are measuring our variable X from the static equilibrium position of the anvil, and we don't have that extra mass of the hammer. To find the initial velocity, we will use conservation of linear momentum.
we have that the mass of the hammer times the velocity of the hammer before the impact plus the mass of the anvil times the velocity on the anvil before the impact is equals to the mass of the hammer, velocity of the hammer after the impact, and mass of the anvil, velocity of the anvil after the impact. And we said that the velocity of the anvil is zero before the impact, and the velocity of the hammer is zero after the impact. So we have that the velocity of the anvil, which is our initial velocity of our vibrating motion, will be equal to the mass of the hammer, velocity of the hammer, divided by the mass of the anvil. If we calculate that, this is 72 inches per second. Remember that we have the velocity of the hammer given in feet per second, so we have to convert that to inches over second and multiply by the masses that are given. Well, we are given the weight, so we have to convert that to mass by dividing by the gravity, which is 32.2, and the gravity is also given in feet over second squared, so we have to convert that to inches of a second square. So we continue with the equation of motion. And this is a very simple equation of motion, which is the mass of the anvil times the acceleration plus 4k times x. And that allowed us to calculate our natural frequency, right, which is k over m. And then if we introduce that here, we have 400 pounds divided by the mass of the anvil, which is 100 pounds divided by the gravity. We get that the natural frequency now is 39.31 radians per second. Now that we have the two initial conditions and the natural frequency where we can find the response, we will write it in terms of a single sign with a phase angle, and we can find the magnitude of that sign will be equals to the square root of the initial displacement square plus velocity divided by the natural frequency square, square root of all that. And since the initial displacement is equals to zero, we get that introducing the value of the initial velocity and the natural frequency, we get the value of 1.83 inches. The phase angle is calculated at a inverse tangent of the initial displacement times a natural frequency over initial velocity. And since the initial displacement is equal to zero, we get the inverse tangent of zero, which is a zero, radians of zero degrees. Well, those are the two values to have our complete response described. Please compare these values to the previous example, which we had a initial velocity due to the hammer.